Thank you once more, my viewer. I want to thank God for giving us yet this another opportunity to come and listen to his word. And I want to also to thank you for tuning in to this program. We are continuing with our program, It Is Written. Today we are going to learn from the book of Matthew. But before that, let us have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us yet this another new day. We have come to your class. You as our teacher, we want to invite you. We want to listen to you. We want to uh, learn at your feet. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us as we go through the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My viewer, today we want to talk about don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. If you look at that uh, statement, it is talking about uh, don't be foolish. So it means don't be a fool, don't do foolish things. But when we look at uh, uh, the, the word that, that we are going to study today, then there the groups here, two groups in fact, that the Bible is talking about. The Bible is talking about the ten virgins. And five of them, the Bible says, were foolish. And five of them were wise. So our topic comes from there. Don't be foolish. Don't be like the five virgins who were foolish. The ten virgins who were foolish. And we'll find why they are referred as uh, foolish. So we go uh, into the, uh, the, uh, the chapter. Chapter 25 of Matthew. Matthew is, a, is a, one of the Gospels, the four Gospels, uh, that were written about the work and the life of Jesus. Uh, Matthew was a, a disciple. He was one of the disciples of Jesus. But before he became a disciple, Matthew was a, a tax collector. You remember when Jesus called him, he was on duty. And he left everything and he followed Jesus. This man here is writing this gospel to the, the, the Jews to prove to them that Jesus is the promise of the Old Testament. Matthew is writing to convince the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. And the same message is to you and I, that Jesus, that Matthew is talking about, is the Messiah. He portrays Jesus as the, uh, as the Lion of Judah. So, uh, I know you've learned more about this book and the chapter where we are going to uh, get our lesson today. You have read it before. You have, talk, you have preached about it before. But I want to believe that the Holy Spirit is going to give us something new in, in, in this chapter. So it goes. Verse 1. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. At what, at what time? So if you look at that statement, it means it is a continuation of what has been said or what has been uh, going on. So if you look at chapter 24, Jesus is talking about it as the, the, the times and the signs of the end. Jesus is talking about the time of his return. And that is why he's saying at that time. So the one speaking in chapter 24 under the same chapter 25, it is none other than Jesus. So Jesus with his con uh, uh, conversation is, is continuing and he says at that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. <laughs> if you look at that statement again, or that, that sentence, it means Jesus is talking about the future. It is in future. What Jesus is talking about will come later on, uh, what we are seeing here. He is saying that uh, what at that time, what time? The time of his coming, the time of the end, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Uh -huh. Five of them Five of the virgins uh -huh, were what? Were foolish. And five were wise. So we have found that there were how many people? There were five, there were ten virgins here who went out to meet what? To meet the, the bridegroom. And the Bible says five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. 
I, I want to believe the Bible will tell us why five were wise and five were foolish. Okay, uh, verse 3. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Uh -huh. Verse 7, Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, and uh, our lamps are going out. I, I, I want to say something about uh, this, this chapter, or this story, or this parable that Jesus is giving here. In the land of Palestine, a wedding was a very important occasion. And those who were wedding and the virgins, this occasion, the man and his wife, they were addressed as the prince and the princess. So the bride bridegroom was addressed like uh, uh, as, as a prince and the bride was addressed as a princess. During the wedding, this, the newlyweds, they are escorted, uh, taking a long distance before they go to their place. They, they took the longest uh, uh, way possible so that these people could get all, uh, let me say, congr uh, congr uh, congr uh, congratulations from everybody or as many as possible, the people who could uh, uh, see them. So they were addressed as prince and princess. They were escorted by a multitude. People congratulated them because of what they did. And after the wedding, these people, they did not go for, our, uh, for honeymoon. They stayed at home for a week and they left the, the doors of their houses open. Why? Because people could come in and congratulate them. Could, people came to uh, uh, appreciate them. People came to give them presents. People came to enjoy with them because of what uh, they had done. It was the happiest moment. It was the happiest week in their life. And therefore, Jesus is telling exactly what took place in the land of Palestine. You remember, he was talking to the Jews who knew exactly what he was talking about. So he was telling them here that during the, the, what time? the end time, during the time of his coming, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. Okay, during the, the wedding in Palestine, ten virgins were to go and meet the bridegroom. And the bridegroom, the time of his coming, was not definite. It was not known by what time he was supposed to come. It could take one week. It could take even two weeks. The time of his coming was not known. So those who went to, to wait uh, on him had to be prepared because it was not known at what time the, the, the bridegroom was, uh, was to come. You know, in, in our country, Kenya, we usually know that the bridegroom comes first maybe to the church and we wait for the word, for the bride. But in Palestine, it is different. That is what used to happen and that is exactly what even happens today. So it is the, 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 the bridegroom that was supposed to, to come. The, 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 the virgins were to go and wait for him. But the time of his coming was not known. Therefore, it was supposed that in, uh, he could come during the day, he would, could come during the night. Therefore, if he was supposed to come during the night, everyone who was supposed to wait on him was supposed to carry a candle. And the candle was to, supposed to be what? Uh, not a candle, but a lamp. You, you, we usually use candles these days, but in Palestine they used uh, to use uh, lamps. And therefore, 
because it was not known what time, the exact time the bridegroom was supposed to come. Those virgins and everybody else who was going to, to the wedding had to carry lambs. And the lambs were supposed to be left doing what? Burning. Even when the, 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 the virgins were, were, were slumbering, they were supposed to be uh, going on uh, burning. So you can see it was wise for somebody who was going to this wedding to carry extra oil. So Jesus is telling us here that these ten virgins who went to the wedding, some of them, five of them, did not carry extra oil. But five of them carried extra oil. Those, therefore, those who did not carry extra oil are the ones that the Bible or the ones that Jesus is referring to as foolish ones. Those who carried extra oil, the Bible says in this parable that they were wise. So remember our topic today is saying don't be foolish. So it is in, in other words it is saying be wise carry extra oil be like the wise what the wise virgins you who is waiting for the second coming of christ this topic is telling us this topic is advising us that we should be like the five wise uh, virgins so jesus is saying these five wise ones carried extra oil but the foolish ones did not carry extra oil so their lamps went on burning, but because they did not carry the extra oil, you can see if the bridegroom did not come on the first day, if he did not come in the second day, then it means the oil that was in these lamps went off. It got finished and therefore the lamps get, uh, it went over. They could not burn anymore because there was no oil. So the Bible says that what? What was required, I've said, that anyone who was supposed to go to meet the bridegroom had to carry what? A lamp. If he came at night, nobody was allowed in the streets without a burning lamp. So this parable is telling us that the bridegroom took time to come. So he did not come immediately as the foolish virgins expected. The bridegroom delayed and therefore because they did not take the extra oil, their lamps went off. Jesus is telling us here that we who are in his church, we who are waiting for his second coming, is giving us this lesson that we should be extra careful. Uh -huh. The Bible says, uh, the bridegroom was long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Before the bridegroom came, when he was now ready, there was somebody who was sent in the streets and this person here was to sound alarm that here comes the bridegroom and everybody was supposed to be ready to meet the bridegroom. So we see that in verse 5 at midnight the cry rang out. Somebody came to raise the alarm that anyone who was there, everybody who came to wait on the bridegroom was supposed to wake up and trim their what? Their lamps. The Bible says that then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. And why? Because our lamps are getting out. Mm -hmm. Because they did not get, uh, they did not carry extra. They are now begging what the wise ones to give them oil so that they could put in their lamps. But we find here, in verse 9, the Bible says, No, they replied, 
The wise ones replied the foolish ones, there may not be enough for both of us, you and us. Therefore, do what? Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Remember, the bridegroom is on the way. And these five foolish virgins, their lamps, lamps are going out. And here, they are supposed to have their lamps burning. So they are asking, they are begging, they are requesting for oil from the what? The five wives. Who took their what? Who took extra oil? And the message that they got, it may not be enough for us. And for that matter, we cannot make that mistake of sharing what we have with you. We, you had a golden opportunity. You had the time that you needed to do what? To buy extra oil. So, because you do not do that, do what? Please run to the petrol station. Buy your kerosene and then come back. And verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Uh -huh. When the bridegroom had come, he entered into the wedding hall and immediately, immediately the door was shut. It happened like that in the, the land of Palestine. And after the door had been shut, no, no intruder was supposed to be allowed in. The door was to be locked. And anybody who was locked out, he was not supposed to disturb those who were inside. The Bible says, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived, the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. The Bible says in verse 11, it is written in verse 11, later the others also came. Who? The foolish ones who went to buy the oil, they now came with the oil, but it was too late for them. They knocked at the door, and then they said, Sir, Sir, the bridegroom, we have been waiting for you for a long time, but because you delayed, our lamps went off, and we went to buy. That is why we are late. We want you kindly, please open the door for us. They said, that is what they said, please open the door for us. But he replied, but the bridegroom replied from inside. He said, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep what Jesus is telling us here. Therefore, keep what Jesus is telling this parable to his immediate listeners, uh, hearers, those, who, uh, those he was addressing, the Jews. And this message applies even to us today. Jesus is in, in this verse or in this uh, context, in this chapter, Jesus would like, Jesus is telling us to be ready so that when he comes, when he comes, he should not find us like the way he found the foolish virgins. That is why we are talking about don't be foolish. You, my brother, my sister, the Bible says, don't be foolish. Don't be like the what? The five foolish virgins who went to wait on the bridegroom. Dear brother, dear sister, this message to us this day is warning us that Jesus is saying, by the time of his return, they will have two groups, people who will be uh, enjoying life. If you look at these two, these groups, these two groups, you may not see, you may not see the difference between these people, uh, the way they, they, they were by that time. Before the time of the coming of the bridegroom, you could not uh, differentiate who was wise and who was Foolish. In the church today, you may not differentiate who is going to heaven and who is not going. So 
just like the ten virgins, we are like that. But when Jesus comes, we will find that there will be two groups in the church. There will be two people who, there will be a group of people who were waiting faithfully until his coming. And there will be another group of people who have been in the church. They have been church goers. They never had any relationship with God. Remember, Jesus says, it is written, it is written in the book of Matthew chapter 7. Not all, that is verse, verse, verse 21, not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom. Then it means there are people who are in the church today who are foolish. There are people who are in the church who will never enter the kingdom of God. There are people whose names are in the church register. There are people who preach, we have faithful elders, we have elders, we have church members, we have church officers, we have church officials in the church. But they are in the list of the foolish people. We have pastor sorry to say that we have even preachers, we have evangelists, we have pastors who are in the church. But but are uh, not ready. By the time that Jesus will come, we will not find them ready. I love this man of Galilee. I love Jesus because he does not want anybody to do what to perish. And that is why he is in fact revealing to us what will happen. If you are a candidate, if you are a candidate and you find your lecturer, like you are a student, in the university, you find your lecturer is telling you, I'm going to set the exams from this area. This man here, the lecturer does not want you to, 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 to fail. That is why he is giving you a leakage from where he is going to set the exams. And therefore, he is telling you, please concentrate there, read there, study there properly. From there is where my questions will come. So the, the lecturer does not want you to fail. That is why he is giving you a leakage. If you have a, a teacher who is telling you what is going to, to set in the exams, this person here loves you, this person here wants you to pass. The same happens with our heavenly master, Jesus Christ. He does not want anybody to perish. That is why he is telling us, that is why he is preparing us for his second coming. And he does not want you so that when he comes, he finds you unawares. He wants you to be ready. That is why he's telling you, by the time of his coming, there will be a, a situation will be like this. We will have two people. We have, will have two groups. A group who have been in the church. This group has been in the church, yes. This group has listened to very powerful uh, sermons. These people have listened to wonderful teachings in the church. But when Jesus comes, they will never inherit the kingdom. This is a warning unto you. This is a warning unto me that Jesus wants us to be ready so that by the time he comes, he may not find us not ready. He would like to find us ready. That is why he's telling us, this is why he's telling us, be ready. In, in the last verse, verse 13, therefore, keep watch, Jesus is telling us, keep watch that that day may not be as a surprise unto you, so that that day may not come abruptly in your life. Jesus loves you, my sister. Jesus loves you, my brother. And that's why he would like you to get eternal life. And that's why he's telling us, be ready when I come. I don't want you to get lost. I don't want you to, not to be ready by the time I come. You know what? These ladies, these five foolish ones, the, the, the wise ones told them, no, we cannot, we cannot share with you the, the oil that we carried. Go to those who, who do what? Who sell the oil and buy from there. You know what, what this means? It means this. There is a relationship that cannot be shared. Your relationship with God cannot be, you cannot share it with anybody. The relationship that you have with your God, you cannot share with your husband. You cannot share with your wife. You cannot share that relationship. The opportunity is there. 
the, this chapter, this parable tells us that opportunity was there. God has given you an opportunity that you need to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The opportunity is given. All that you need in order to prepare for the second coming of Christ is in place. God has done all that is needed. In the opportunity that you need, God has granted. You know what, sister? You know what, brother? There are people who are in the hospital. They don't get this message which you are getting today. There is a brother who is in prison who does not get this message that you are getting. Therefore, an opportunity has been given to you. The opportunity has been given unto me so that we be ready so that when Jesus comes, he will find us ready. The opportunity is given. I remember there was this lady here who got sick and was admitted aware at, at Magadhi District Hospital. And after she learned that she was not going to come out of that place alive, she was now asking for baptism. When the opportunity that she had, she abused the opportunity. The church members told her, sister, the way you are living is not the, 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 the one that is expected out of you. You as a Christian, you should live a life that is glorifying the name of God. But this lady here turned the deaf ear to the messages that she, she got. But after realizing that she was not going to come out of the, the, the hospital alive, was when she was now looking for somebody to baptize her. That opportunity that she got, she abused. Don't be foolish like this sister. Don't be foolish like the five virgins who are foolish, who did not care. The opportunity that God gave them. Don't be foolish, my dear sister. Don't be foolish, brother. The opportunity that you have, it may not last longer. You have this opportunity and it is today that you have. You have an opportunity to give your life to God. You are in the church and are just joking around in the church. The opportunity that God has given you, you will cry for it, never to find it. That is why Jesus is telling us this day, keep watch, be ready, 24-7, be ready so that when he comes, he will not find you asleep. We cannot share a relationship you cannot share the relationship that you have with your God, with your child. You cannot share the relationship that you have with your husband. Yes, I know there are men. There are, I know there are so many men who escort their families to where? To the church. And then they leave them there. And you ask them, they say, oh, my family, my family worship in such, such a, a, a church. I have given them the, the opportunity, I've given them freedom of worship, and they worship. Let me tell you this, this man, you, you, my brother, who, who says like this, you give your family an opportunity to go to church. A time will come that will you, you will regret, you will say, I wish I knew. That opportunity, you will never get it. You will, your wife will never share with you the relationship that she has with God. With God. Your children will never share with you the relationship that we, they have with God. It is a, it is a, a self a relationship. You have to make a relationship with your God. You cannot share it with your friends. You cannot share it with, with, with your workmates. You cannot share it with your family. It is an individual's decision. You have to make a decision now. You have to make a decision now, my sister, because God does not want you to perish. Why should you perish? Why should, should you miss eternal life? God has given us opportunity that we need. God is saying, therefore, Keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Jesus is telling us here that his coming is, is only, it is a secret we point to God. But he, he has shown unto us the signs of his coming. And therefore he's telling us this day, don't be foolish, don't be foolish. Read the times, read the signs and the times of the end. We are living in the end times, my sister, folks, we are living in the end times and you should not be foolish like the five uh, foolish virgins. Jesus would like you. Jesus would like me.
so that when he comes, he finds us ready. And that is why this message has come to us this day. May God bless you. I, I, I want to believe my sister. I want to believe my dear brother. You want to go to heaven. Yes, we are in the church, yes. But we are not ready. There are people who are in the church, but they are not ready for the second coming of Jesus. Jesus is telling us that his coming is very near. I love Jesus because he loves me and he loves you and does not want you to perish. Don't abuse this opportunity. I know there is somebody who is longing for this opportunity that you have. I once went uh, to preach at Kamiti prison and I met this man. This man who was condemned to death. This man who was condemned. But I want to thank God because of that brother. He accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior. And I remember the chapter, the book, let me say the book, the chapter and the verse that he quoted. That is Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. The no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Even if you are in prison, my dear brother, you have no condemnation because you have somebody who has prepared a place for you. In that place, there will never be prison. There will never be a place where we'll be like hospitals. My dear brother, my dear sister, this is the time. Don't, be, don't abuse this opportunity like the foolish virgins did. That is why the Bible is saying, our topic today is, is saying, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Make good use of this opportunity and you'll never regret it. You will really enjoy. Remember, it is written, don't be foolish. Remember, it is written that be, keep watch because you do not know when Jesus is coming. Let me tell you one thing that maybe you have not known. Jesus may not come today. Jesus may not come tomorrow. Maybe he may, may not come this week. But do you know whether you will see tomorrow? Do you know whether you, you will see next week? Are you sure you will be there next, next year? Therefore, don't be foolish. Keep watch because you never know what tomorrow will bring forth. You just have today to give your life to Jesus. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Hope to meet again next time. God bless you so much. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for revealing to us the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Because you do not want anybody to, put, to perish. That is why you have given us this message this day. The message that is telling us not to be foolish, but to be wise, to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that whoever has, has listened to this message, me included, will be ready by the time Jesus will appear in the clouds. Maybe he will come when we are already asleep. But our prayer is when that comes, will be among the first to resurrect in the first resurrection. May God, may honor and glory be to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.